Because he's Jewish. Because his dick is. <laughs> <laughs> That's staying in, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's be quiet. You know, it's a, a small wash for a big man, you know what I'm saying? So the uncut gem is his cock, right? Because it's not circumcised. Hey. Yes. Hey, KG, stop, hey, you gotta stop being on that, KG. I'm gonna show you this movie. You know I love this movie, KG. Yeah, you, you, hey, you want some water? You got some, you know, we got some very own bottle of water here. You know, it's cold, you know? You know, I also want some Gatorades. Get us some Gatorades. Now I don't want to get, get, get us some Gatorades. <laughs> I want a whole film that's just a prequel. About yeah. Adam Sandler and Nina Menzel's, like, just the relationship just falling out. I yeah. can't. And the, the custody battle over their children and the house. And... It's so crazy because every Adam Sandler movie I've ever seen, regardless of how good it is, I've never watched an Adam Sandler movie and gone, Man, I wish I got even more time with these characters. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't you think. I, aside from again, you guys need to watch uh, Punch Drunk Love because that's a good. That's no. a good Adam Sandler proving himself. And this movie is like, come on, give me another shot. Hey, uh, here's a new shirt. It's a Gucci shirt. It's five dollars. Still has a tag on it. Still has a t- still has a tag on it. <laughs> he just has a pile of shirts that have the tag on them. Still, you know, sometimes people lose their lose their shirts in my store, so I just got some here. You know, so um, he has a, a a spare pair of of, of of an outfit in his car just in case someone <laughs> leaves him nude in his own trunk. You know, I'll <laughs> bet I'll bet a majority of what goes on in Howie's life is very similar to what goes on in Adam Sandler's life. <laughs> I believe it. A lot of just pulled. It's easy that. to tap into that character, man. I think. Yeah, see, I think so too. As an actor, you have to draw on things, and yeah, of he drew on that. Yeah. So, on the escape pod, my name is Sal. I'm Josiah. I'm Nathan. And we just watched the best film of December, probably. Oh, easily. easily. Best of the easily. best film of this month of of the week it was released. I, uh, I'd say it's. It's in the top three of the year. I was top two. I was gonna say, yeah, I'd say top three or top two. Definitely definitely better than Rise of Skywalker. Oh Christ! Yeah, I can't believe I live in a reality where, in the same week, a Star Wars film and an Adam Sandler film came out, and Adam Sandler film was not only better, it was better by magnitudes. Stupid, Stupid. as Josiah would say. If you if you took one scene from this movie, (laughs) it would have more like quality, like more mathematical like explained quality than the entire Disney Star Wars franchise put together. And also probably more dialogue because holy shit, people are talking and talking and like... Yeah, whoever does the subtitles for this, I hope you get paid very well because holy crap. You're gonna have to like frame it around the screen just to like yeah. keep like holy shit. Yeah. And I will say um, I was born in New York. Mm. I lived in that culture for a while. Accurate. This is so just like my family. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's yelling. Everyone's talking over each other. It's it's fucking pandemonium. So did that bring you back? Did that it like did. did that did that make you have like a weird kind of uh, out of body experience? I watched it like on my, my birthday too, pretty much. Oh so god. It yeah. felt very interesting. That's yeah. that's great. Thinking of the past. But yeah, uncut gems, you know, fucking great film. I'm so glad that it was good. Cause I know I know we were all like you know, Uncut Gems just needs to be good, and like that, El Camino and uh, Once Upon a Time in, in Hollywood can can carry me through. Yeah, because this is this has been a bad year, shitty year for bad movies. Year. So having a trailer that looks really good and like I'm like I don't know, I don't know if I can trust you, Adam Sandler. And he's like, nah, come on, give another shot. Like, you know, all, all the times I made fun of you, Adam Sandler, it means nothing. It nothing. meant nothing. <laughs> I'll give you another shot. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we saw the trailer for this. We were all like, what the fuck is this? There's just something about it where it was extremely compelling, but not in like the trailer way of we're trying to sell you the best looking movie. This trailer was like, no, we're going to like give you like the mood. Like you don't really know what the plot <laughs> yeah. is. You just know like this is the character and like he gets into shit. But like the performance and like the the editing and, and like the presentation was just like, you really want to see this movie. And I'm like, you're yeah. right, because I, I feel strangely compelled by whatever I'm about to say. Because the plot was not what I thought it was going to be. No, no. no. Like, when it opens in, like, Ethiopia, I, I was like, what the fuck? I yeah. was like, am I in the right theater? Yeah, I was like, wait a fucking second. Because we get, like, a three, four, five minute scene of just these miners. What well, yeah. we find out are, are black Jews in Ethiopia who find this opal. Well, it's, it's cool because they're, they're opportunists because some guy gets his leg injured somehow. Yeah. yeah. And, everyone, and, and everyone's focused on that. And these two guys go, hey, 
Let's go get a, a gem for thing. ourselves and yeah. sell, it, sell it secretly. And so we zoom in on this opal. At they first, find... I thought they were gonna like try to escape or something, but it's like no, 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 no. no. yeah, yeah. No, they're just there's there's you know black juice, black juice. Black yeah, juice. we we pan into the opal, and then we go through this journey through the galaxy, like the nature of all things. That, like, that fucked me up. I way. was so glad I wasn't inebriated. Yeah, yeah no, that would have been really bad. The next time I will be. Ne oh, God. oh no. Because then we go through that, and then we start going into flesh, and then we realize we're in we're in Adam Sandler. <laughs> And then we realize they're doing a colonoscopy. We're in his ass. Yeah. And it's like, you yeah. know. We, 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 we seamlessly transition from the minds of Ethiopia through the galaxy into Adam Sandler's asshole. And you know what? I feel like this would be a joke that they would do in one of his shitty movies. Like, and I want us to end up in my ass. They'll laugh so loud. You know it's a good Adam Sandler movie because they show if there's going to be shit and there's not because he has a clean colon. He does. Yeah, he does not have ass cancer. Yeah. yeah. So this film is indeed not ass cancer confirmed. There is unlike other films that came out this week. <laughs> there's so there's so many parallels to Adam Sandler's career just yeah. shoved into this movie. And the best part is I I'm sure it's not intentional. But it feels like it but is. But it feels like it is. Especially in a later scene, but we'll we'll get to yeah. it when we get to it. We start out we're mainly trying to get our bearings because it's just like, again, the dialogue is overlapping. And then we have the, the opening credits and the music is like droning and yeah. and synthy and everyone's fucking yelling over each other. Yeah. The movie really lets up for a fucking moment. No, no, no not at all. I made the joke to Joe about how like all of the lines in the trailer were from the scenes that there was like a moment of like quiet for yes. two fucking seconds. Yeah, because the rest of it was just constant, constant like yelling, arguing, dialogue, like uh, trying to win people over. Like Because that main set of the jeweler shop is so small and there's other employees having conversations. Yeah. Wow. And other people in KD's posture having conversations. And you hear them all. It's all happening. And it's, it's, I, I think it's so funny how even in, in the trailer, that shot of Adam Sandler looking over is slowed down to better fit the trailer. Cause in the movie, it's like, yeah, boom. And it's, that was funny as fuck. That was yeah. this. Yeah. I, I assure you, if you laughed at the trailer, you will laugh at every single line that you heard in the trailer. Oh, I was laughing context. at the theater. But you'll also get a lot of anxiety. And at first no yes. one else was. And then eventually they were kind of like, okay, yeah, you're, you're right. But, yeah. but this film is such an anxiety trip. You're, no. Yeah. It's specifically the auction scenes when it really starts to set in for me. Mm -hmm. Well, because you can just physically see him slipping more and more into the shit. Yeah. Like, every possible thing that could go wrong goes wrong. But somehow he still finds a way to, like, keep it going. Like, every time he, like, tries to convince someone, give me another shot. Yeah, so so the basic, the basic plot of the movie is that Adam Sandler owes a lot of money to a bunch of people. He has this incredible opportunity along the way, but... But along the way to securing that, we see that he frequently gets opportunities and squanders them yeah. because he's addicted to gambling and he takes people's money, takes people's shit and sells it and goes, no, I'll get I'll get it back I'll get before it back. they realize. Yeah. It's so much just hectic. Like, I'm going to pawn this off here to come back for the end of the week and like come the, with this money. The bit where yeah. he pawns KG's ring, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I also didn't realize that... That was instantaneous, too. I, I also didn't realize that Kevin Garnett, the, the person, he's, is an actual basketball player. He's an actual yeah. basketball player. And he's a great actor. Which is really cool. And it's his first acting role, too. Yeah. yeah. Him and The Weeknd. They're both their first, their first films. They're yeah. great. Oh, the, is The Weeknd a real rapper? Yeah, he's a they're real an actual, rapper. Yeah, they're, yeah, it's an actual thing. Yeah, Julia Fox actually saw him in an underground scene and recommended him for the movie because she knew his work. And so in this movie, he's like a well-established rapper, and it's like, no, but in real life at that time, he Maybe was... They, they said that, oh, yeah, they're up and coming, because it's back in... Yeah. 20, they said back in 2012. Yeah. So it's yeah. back when they were, like, actually up and coming. And again, I didn't realize till like, halfway through the movie, oh, this is technically, like, a period piece, because Kevin Garnett did win the World Series, like, at this point. So, like, yeah. the championships, he won it, and now the whole movie's like, yeah, but he did it because of a magical stone. Yeah, I did some digging, too. They wrote this script back in 2009. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And then they couldn't get it picked up at all. Yeah, Adam Sandler wouldn't do it, either. Yeah, he wouldn't do it. He, he was offered to it back in 2012 or whatever, and he wouldn't do it. Yeah. And then eventually, like, Robert and Pattinson saw their work, and was like, you're so great here. Let's make a movie together. It was yeah. another fucking movie. And then Sears were like, hey, we'll make your next film. Do you want to do a Marvel movie? And they're like, I'm really under uncut gems that I'm saying. Yeah, they're you like, fuck what? you. I fucking love you guys, and I'm going to support your works for the rest of my life. That's wonderful. 
I need to. Because you guys have integrity, staff, your brothers. You really do. I need to look at what you But basically, the main person or the main conflict that he owes money to is his brother in law, Arno. Yeah. Which the movie keeps it hidden for so long that they're related. It does. Because yeah. it, it's like they wouldn't just say, like, oh, brother in law, I owe you money. Yeah. So they like the way, like, there's this tension, but you can tell that there's, like, a lot of history. And it makes sense because whenever, like, because they're in the car scene, whenever, you know, before you find out they're related, he's like, come on, Arno. And he's being very frank with him that like, yeah. if you owe money to like, a loan shark, I mean, I'd be a bit more like, hey, hey listen, uh, sir. But he's like, hey, hey. Yeah. You know, and then later when you find out they're related, it's like, oh, because they're oh, family. Okay. That's yeah. why he's so late. Yeah. He's trying to play and, that. Up. And they get yeah. that scene and at that. Well, we'll talk about it. But the Passover scene, which is great. I don't think we're going through it very literally. No, it's, a, it's all right. We're making attempts to. We're making attempts to. You need to understand. You might say this is poorly structured, but the film is so <laughs> frantic and like. Yeah. Like I it's hard like, to remember what play happens when. Exactly. I feel like I feel like you don't fully process a scene until the scene after it has finished. And then you're like, oh shit. Because oh, there's no like me. scene, sequel, scene, sequel. It's just like scene, 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 fuck you, bitch. And I gotta yeah. say, like, that's hard to do to make me yeah. feel. And that it's like much. two hours. It's two hours. And it, like, it feels like the trailer throughout that two hours. It has that whole spectrum of emotions that you feel yeah. in that one trailer. So, again, Safety Brothers, I need to look up your other shit and watch it because. It's like, yeah. I hope you guys win some shit. I hope Adam, uh, Adam Sandler wins shit. But his main thing is he spent like 12, 17 months trying to get this opal from Ethiopia. Yeah. So he's watching the History Channel one day because, you know, that's what you fucking do. Yeah. And course. then, like, his whole plan is that he's going to auction it to this, these people. But then, like, you know, he, he's, he's a fucking dork. Gets yeah. all excited, comes out, shows people around. Kevin Garnett sees him and goes, I want to buy it. And he's like, uh, uh, I already have this auction. And it's a price to be a million dollars. Okay, she's like, I'll I'll give it like a quarter of a million. And um, no, because I can get a bigger buy here. And and this is where it started when I realized yeah. what kind of a movie this would be. Where he's like, oh, you know, I can he he can borrow it over the weekend. He'll just give it back. And he's like. Oh, you know, I like you, KG, but this is really... A, no, no, please, just, I, I'm obsessed with this. Like, I need this to win. I need this. Yeah. And he's just, like, doesn't want to, like, upset him. So he's like, oh, yeah, you bring it, but you, you, your boy needs to bring it back by 9 a.m. Yeah. 9 a.m. because it needs to go to auction. And he's just like... like oh, oh, I need your ring. Give me your ring for collateral. And, like, the uh, his his uh, employee, I forget his name, but he's the guy from Atlanta. Yeah. Like, gets pissed at him. He's like, no, don't do that. And Kevin Garner's like... Oh, no, that's fair. That's, that's fine. That's fine. It's Takes so off sorry. his championship ring and gives it to Adam Sandler. It's Damani. Damani. Lakeith Stanfield. Yeah. yeah. He's right there. Uh, he's right there. He is. I need to watch. Uh, sorry to bother you. You really do. We have a poster of it. That's what I was pointing to. Yeah. The yeah. Audience. Sorry. No, they can see it. Oh, it's um, just. Oh. Um, uh, we do audio now. So, <laughs> so Howard wins the bet on the game where he had loaned the Opal to Kevin Garnett. And then, and then, uh, Damani's like, yeah, uh, KG wants to keep that a bit longer. And this whole time, I'm like, oh, shit, is Kevin Garnett just gonna steal the Opal from him? Because they, they give him the runaround, like, where it's like, yeah, I'm just kind of like, I got it with me, that's all we'll say. And you're like, I, uh, hmm, because you put that ring up for Pawn until Friday. Yeah, oh, shit. Because the gamble is, he gets KG's championship ring. Mm. Gets the money from that. Goes and bets it on the game. And then... Later on, when Arno's people takes him from the play, he finds out that Arno called and canceled the bet. Yeah, that's right. Even though he won a one big, and then he's like, oh, you fucked up, Arno, you fucked up! And then he finds out, yeah, he would have won a fuck ton of money, and which is set up for later. Yeah, because it's interesting how this movie is like, I feel like as things disintegrate more, he starts being more successful. Yeah. Because, like, cause he, like, thrives in the chaos. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, it, previously to this, I figure, like, he made some bets, lost some money. Whereas now in this movie, he's literally like, okay, like, I'm at the end of, like, everything. But then, like, he just starts winning. And it's really cool because it just shows, like, how addictive that can be once yeah. you start being on top. And so, yeah, like... uh the fucking collectors come to the office. Is that bo that's after KG comes because he leaves? Uh, and he's like, didn't you see KG was oh, just in Jesus, there? This film is so fucking my brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the, he tries to get him water, and the guy it's, fucking it's, slaps it's, him. It's always like that. See, that was earlier. Oh yeah, yeah that was know. before KG. First yeah, it was before up. he showed up. Yeah, this film because it's it's the same sets too. Yeah, so I'm like. Oh, wait, but they're all in the same location. Oh, fuck. But they strip Arno and the guys strip him naked after he was at his daughter's play. 
and he's naked in his fucking trunk. Then he has to call his wife, who he's on the fritz with, and says, yeah, hey, I locked my keys in my trunk. And she comes out, and he's fucking naked, and he's like, I, I, I made a mistake. And the dirtiest look, and then just waddles away. It's and it, so fucking good. Because they established pretty early on that their relationship is fucked. Yeah. Oh, it's um, real cause, bad. Because he... Because he meets with Julia before he's he meets with He's fucking one of the girls that works for his place. Yeah, Julia. Yeah. Do we do we see his scene at his apartment with Julia before he yes. goes home? Okay. Yeah, yeah I know. I it This movie, man. So, so there's that. But then he goes home and he's watching the game that he betted on and is really riled up about it. And then Idina Menzel is pissed because he needs to tuck his kids in and he's too focused. We see that one of his kids who's grown up is also starting to get into the mm-hmm. gambling yep. bit and really into it. And his his only positive relationship is with Julia and then that son. Yeah. Every yeah. other relationship is fucking toxic and corroded. It's and... mostly okay with his dad. Yeah. Well, yeah, but then he fucks his dad over. Well, yeah, but his dad's okay with it, mostly. Uh, well, yeah, that was also cringe. That, but... Oh, it was super it was super bad. So, oh God. We get this scene where Howard tries to like get Damani to take him to KG because he's like, I need that opal. Because Damani's like, hey, meet me outside. And he's like, no, no, I'm being here because he's, he's at the place. Yeah. I didn't realize it then, but later I realized that he's at the, the, the museum. Yes. To yes. have it auctioned. Yeah, he's there. He's like, it's 945. This isn't Damani time. It's nine. It's past 9 a.m. Oh, this and traffic was real bad. And he's like, oh, okay. And then he he's like, yeah, why don't you get in the car? Why don't you give me the opal? And then it's very clear, like, Damani doesn't have it. And while this is happening, these other Jewish people come, and they're trying to collect money from him. And then he gives them a watch as part of the payment. They're like, we're not going to sell this. And he's like, hey, I don't want to buy no watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and later we find out, because he, he keeps giving people watches as gifts. We find out later that those are the watches Damani has got yeah. for him to sell and he's just given away. Yeah. To cover his own debts, yeah. And it pisses off Damani so much that he fucking killed all of his fish. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he kills his fish, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Which gave me fucking nightmares. But the, uh. the good news is his debts came back clean. Adam Sandler's okay. No harm done. Yeah, with his colon? Yeah, his colon's okay. Yeah. That set up and payoff is... There's so many good jokes that get set up and paid off. Like, yeah. AKG, don't lean on that. AKG, don't lean on the glass. Yeah. Like, everything feels so well well set up and paid off. And Julia... Amidst all this chaos, there's, like, all this... there's, like, there's like 20 Chekhov's guns being put on the oh, walls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's extremely well plotted and tightly written, where, like, everything makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, so, we get this stuff with Julia. She's his mistress. She's, well, she's very attractive. I am she's... I am overwhelmed, sir. And She's kind of thought, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but... That's her thing. You know, it's, uh... I have maintain my character. But she, but she, awesome. she's, she's having coke with the weekend. <laughs> yeah. And then he like breaks in and goes, "What are you doing, you skank? And then they like he yells at her. And... Well, because they're like, because the weekend is like, "Hey, I really want to fuck you," and she's like, "Oh, mm-hmm. you can't touch," but she's clearly also into it. So and, like, and then, and then uh... she's like, because later on she's like, "How are we? Didn't do anything." Because five minutes earlier. How are you so hard already? Yeah. Hey, listen. So how'd you know that? And to be fair, they keep it ambiguous if they fucked. But uh... well, like they 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 were building up this thing where it was a red herring. Where I assume like, oh well, look, like the only person that he is close to is this uh, thought who's going to betray him for money. And then it turns out she's like the most loyal person to him and will do anything for him. And it's like I appreciate that this did not end with yeah, him. The fact that it turned out to be that she was actually in love with him was yeah. really surprising. Because I was waiting for her inevitable betrayal. I was like, she's going to fuck him over. Because yeah. it feels like it feels like uh, it feels almost like a deconstruction of Adam yeah. Sandler movies where yeah. he has romances with way more attractive women but then it's clear like i think he calls her a prostitute at one point and i assume he's just being facetious no he is yeah. yeah but but clearly like they work together at the jewelry parade wow but she doesn't come in sometimes like oh i'm not coming to work that must yeah. be really great that must be great she's not coming to work i don't feel like it but then also she's also like she'll go to like parties and like get stuff off people and like hey and yeah. you can sell it because they live together in an apartment yeah so it's really they have an interesting relationship where like you think that it was all just like, oh, he just pays her for sex and for companionship, but no, they're like actual partners. Yeah. yeah. And like she actually cares about him. Yeah, it was so good. <laughs> it was, I was it's, I was thoroughly surprised. I love this movie. It man. made the ending less depressing for me. It's it, yeah. Because <laughs> the ending is kind of depressing. But yeah, we get this bit where uh, Damani quits because he's like, you pawned KG's ring and you gave my watches away, so then he kills the fish. Yeah. And then we get even more where Howard goes, oh shit. Because I didn't get my own appraisal, the guys at the auction appraised it at, like, way lower. 
And he's there's this extremely awkward scene where he calls the woman. He's like, yeah, so she totally said that the appraisal has been changed. And she's like, well, I just have a question. Calls me, I just talked to her. You don't need to call her. And I'm like, oh, God, this is so uncomfortable. I'm that lady behind the counter like, every day of my life. That, her acting was so good. Because it was like, even though like, I understand that he was upset, I'm like, you're being a cock sucker right oh, now. Oh, yeah, he's so obnoxious. Yeah. Like, she was like, if you keep your voice down, it'll be okay. Yeah. Oh yes, and uh, and so before that, we have the. Uh, <laughs> There's so much that happens. Is it the Passover one? that they're celebrating? It is. Oh, Passover. it is. Oh, gee. Because uh, they got to read the ten plagues. Yeah, they got to read the ten plagues. You take Yiddish, I'll take English. Yeah, and this is where we establish that that uh, Arnold is his uh, brother-in-law, and that's how they that's how they have all that. And Howard tries to talk to him throughout it, and he just shuts him down and doesn't listen. And we have this scene where uh, he walks in on Idina Menzel, and she's wearing her dress from her, I think they say it's from her bat mitzvah. Her homecoming. Her homecoming. Her homecoming, yeah. And, you know, because Idina Menzel is great. Beautiful still, queen. S- still fits, and everyone's like, oh my god, you're gorgeous. And I'm like, this is this is worship that I that I understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but we have this scene, this is af- after he assumes that Julia fucked the weekend and is done with her and then he's like hey you look gorgeous and i've made a lot of mistakes but let's, <laughs> let's, let's try it again you know and give me another shot and then she's just like you're the most annoying human being on the planet and i fucking hate you i just i, it's, I feel sick looking at you I, oh. <laughs> like i don't know about you guys i thought it was really weird how like all of adam sandler's filmography like scrolled across the screen as she was saying that that was also in your theater yeah yeah just like oh i your your annoying faces your jokes are not funny and it's just like i I feel like if it was up to me i would never see you again (laughs) yeah and that's like that's how i was feeling about adam sandler and the past like 20 movies he's done and then this one became julia then yeah i'm julia i'll just do anything for you i got a nice ass and you know (laughs) i can provide (laughs) but also there's a scene during the, the the passover where like they're watching the game, and they oh, yeah. did the funny joke. Like, what's what's with, what's with, with Jews in basketball? Oh, yeah. The first person to win a two-point shot was Jewish. Oh, yeah, really? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, give me another shot. But um, he's talking about KG, and Arno, Arno walks in and sits down. And he's telling his dad, Adam Sandler, is about the Opal and how it's appraised for. And Arno's listening like, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. Like, yeah, you know, they do some very, you know, serious moves, you know, gonna make a lot of money. And I was like, that's interesting. Because <laughs> since we're in a family setting, Arno can't, like, be a dick to him. And it's great, they already talk about how, like, uh, Arn- uh, dad's, like, the complaint that Arno said, like, happy holidays, like, he has a fucking intruder in his house. It was so great. Well, again, this factors in the ending, but I never got the feeling that Arno, like completely hated Howard. And he wanted to give him a shot. No, no, that's the thing is the whole, the way I viewed this movie is Arno had asked him at least 200 times before. <laughs> like, he's asked him for months, like, please, can I just have a little bit of my money back? And and Howard just didn't respect him and was like, well, you're just my family member. I can treat you however I want. And so then eventually Arno was like, okay, like, seriously, I, I got in contact with someone who's gonna, like, you know, rough, like, beat you up a little bit. We'll strip you naked. Like, I don't want, I don't want to hurt you. But, like, you really need to understand that I need my money back. And he just gives him so many chances and he doesn't really want to hurt him because he's family. Yeah. And then at the end, he doesn't realize that like that makes him look weak. And so that ends up. And so the, the Arno arc is so fucking subtle because at first you see him only as like a thing to antagonize Howard. But it turns out that he's actually like a pretty nice guy. He just he got like like everyone in his life has. They're just done with Howard. And so he's like, well, but yeah, the Passover scene's really good. He really fucking so good. much shit. It really does. And yeah, she just says, no fucking way we're going to get back together. And he's like, okay. Boils. Boils. And then after this, he convinces his father-in-law, Gooey. He's like, you're gonna, you, you should just bid up the price on the Opal to drive up the price. I promised you KG wants it more than anything. He, he's going to buy it. And he's like, all right, I'll do it. And then he goes outside. He wants a, he wants a cut, though. Yeah, he does. Some... Um, like Garnet or something? bows out right at 190. He doesn't go to 200, and they're just bidding back and forth, and it's so fucking uncomfortable. And and Gooey gets it, and he's like, "Yeah, you know, I'll I'll give you out of my own pocket what you're what you're owed. It's all good." And he takes the opal back from him. And he's like, "Well, I gotta sell it." And just like whatever. Yeah, he's just done. And then Ar- last we see a Gooey. Yeah, it is Arno, Phil, and oh. Nico meet him outside of the auction, and 
punch him in the nose and throw him in the fountain. And I was immediately like, oh, no, his phone. <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, that's going to fuck him over somehow. And it's like, no, it's just he loses his, uh, what does he lose? His glasses. His glasses, yeah. So. And then he gets his dark glasses, and then you know it's for real. Yes. That's what's, yeah. that's, what's real good. And then we kind of get to this run. the climax kind of starts, where Julia comes back and he's crying because his nose is bleeding and he doesn't have glasses and he's just like he's a fucking wreck and julia's just like trying to comfort him he's like no i don't deserve it and she's like i got your name tattooed on my ass and he's like ah oh, oh no, god i'm not worthy i'm not worthy and she's just like you don't like him no, no I, I love, love it, it. <laughs> he's like no i love it and it's just oh, like uh, it's, it's so good it's so good and i'm like yeah i'm just glad like one relationship like paid off like he does admit that he was an asshole to her, and yeah, and that's nice. He's like, no, I understand. We missed the scene where like she goes to his, to his work to like talk to him. Oh right? yeah, and then she walks down, sees her. She's she has like a fucking smoothie. Oh, you hurried over here, did you? Smacks it. And she's like, and she's like screaming because like she's like, oh, I hurried over here to see you, and but she's stopping got like fucking Starbucks. Yeah, it's like yeah, sure, bitch. Thought. And then he manages to convince the pawning guy. I'll uh, give you my Nyx ring if you give me the K the KG ring. You've always had that ring. Yeah, you've always had that ring. He's like, no, give me another shot. As one last ride, this is for all the marbles. Yeah, and so he gets it, and then instead, so so this all kind of comes where, oh, I forgot the scene where KG and Damani and the other guy get stuck in the fucking buzz room, and like they have to like fucking fiddle with it, and it takes like five minutes it of just them being so. Oh, it's, and this is after KG has brought back the opal yes. and a huge bag of money going, I will take it from you. And he's like, no, you can bid on it tomorrow. Then we have this bit where the collectors come with Arno. I just had KG in here, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to make a big score. And then rather than use this money, he has like $175,000, yeah. which I think would cover his debts to his, bro uh, his brother-in-law and then have a little bit extra. No, he has a, he has one sixty five because right. KG gave it straight to whoever it was going to go. The, Demani, the, the yeah. 10000 with the Demani. So um, he has like one six five, which I believe would pay off his debts to his brother-in-law. Yeah, they, I think they said he owes him hundred k. Yeah, he owes him hundred k. So he would have like 65 fucking K to take care of everything else. But in one of the greatest, like, moments of acting, like, in cinematic history, like, you see the moment when Howard decides, no, I've got one last one in me. Because, like, they have already in the exchange, and Katie's like, so how much was that really? Yeah, and he tells them, like, it was appraised at 1.3 million. He's no, like, no, but how much did you buy it for? Uh, well, I made a lot of calls. It was my time. Hey, listen, the deal's already done. Like, it's just, you know, you and me, just... How much was it? It's like, yeah, it's like, what is it, 100K? Yeah, it was 100,000. Right. So, so I assume... That. Or something like that. Ten k. It was like it was like it was, yeah. It was like yeah. some low. And he's like yeah, but they, he's like not nah, to them. That's a lot of money. And he's just well, like, no, I, I think it was a hundred k because I think you can infer that that's the money, money he that got he from from Arno. yeah oh. yeah he used Arno's money to buy the opal yeah, yeah. Jesus because that's when yeah. he's like I didn't go through all this trouble just to make sixty five k yeah which is what he would have got if he paid yep. Arno back You're right okay yep yeah. so then he he could just hand over the money and this and they get stuck in the well this happens later yeah but, but so what's happening is that. Now KG's all like, oh man, what the fuck? Like, you made all this money off of this? And then he just goes into this monologue about, no, listen, like, this math, you need this Opal, and I and I can bet on you. You're going to have a great game, KG. And it's just Cause, like... Because you want to win. And how you win is, you know, you don't have one point, two points. I'm by 30 points. You know, that's how you win. But me is how I win. This is I how need to I make, win. You know, if I make more money, that's me. That's me scoring big. You, you, you do those shots. You know, you get three points over, ten points over. You know, that's you. That's how you feel good. Me? This is what I need. I need to make more money because you know, yeah. that's how I win. He like shows him the gambling site and he's going, "Look, these people don't think you're gonna do it. I'm gonna bet on you." <laughs> yeah, it's it's so good, but you're also like, "No, please, just give them the money," because then eventually they get stuck. Because Adam Sandler gets so wrought up in his own speech. Yeah, yeah, yeah he does. He perspires himself. Yeah, yeah. That moment when it like hits that he can make one more bet is so. Good. Because you're immediately like, no, but also like, this is how I win. And then he... So he has Julia go to the next office and Yeah, so like, as, the as the guys are stuck in the thing, and he will open the door, he calls Julia. Julia no, because, okay, so, yeah, so Katie's in the office with him. The, the guys are outside waiting, because yeah. they know the money's being transferred right now. He calls Julia, has her go over to the next, the next room, the next store. He got the window, he gives her the money, he gives her the bet, and she's supposed to go to Mohegan's son and place the bet. 
via fucking helicopter, by the way. Which is he, great. he hires a helicopter, which is a thing you could do, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you just do that. Like, I saw there was a thing on Facebook the other day where like, someone had to go from, like, one city to another. It was cheaper to helicopter. It was cheaper Uber. to helicopter than yeah. take an actual, like, Uber. Oh, absolutely. It was yeah. so yeah. fucking funny. It's great. But so, yeah, he sets that up. And so then, like, and the two of the guys that are with Arno go follow the girl after, like, they find out that she's gone yeah. for a yeah. long time. And they go into the room and they're like, yeah, we know KG was just here. You know, give us the money. And he's like, you know, I, he didn't have it. You know, we didn't have the money. <laughs> and they're like, we know he had the money. But no, like, yeah, it's somewhere else. Like, I wouldn't do that. And they find out that, you know, he placed that bat. And they're like, oh, God damn it, Howard. And then, and then they, they, they decide, okay, we got to go get the girl. They go into the, the antechamber to his office and get stuck. And he's like, oh, oh. I'm just going to keep you here. He, as the door closes, the file falls down. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, oh. It's such a it's such a light bulb moment because we just see how he notices it. And then he's like, oh. Yeah. I don't have to let you out. Yeah. And it's like, I wouldn't advise locking them in there. They might get pretty upset. And he's like, no, no. When I show them that I, I actually have the ability, they should have trusted me and placed the bet. Then they'll come to my side, and there's the moment where the game's going. On. I've never seen a movie where like a bat baiting on a basketball game is the most triumphant like, I've never thing been ever. So excited for basketball in my life. Yeah, yeah. And and she and it shows her whole journey like dodging people, like placing the bet, and I forget the guy she meets at the hotel, but he's apparently a real he's, guy. He's like almost Kirk Douglas. He's almost Kirk Douglas, and he tries to get her up to his room. And again, I'm worried that like they're gonna do this thing where he finds out she made the bet, and he's gonna kill her and take the money. But the movie doesn't mercifully doesn't do that. And and so she is successful, and then Howard is like every time. They make like a score or something. He's like cheering and pointing it out to them. Yeah, he, yeah, he's like walking them through it, and and you see like the the two thugs are just like fuck this guy. Like, I don't but there's him. a but moment Arnie is like, but but there's okay. a moment where both of them are like, my God, he's doing it. Yeah, I didn't know that basketball betting was more than just like, well, I think the Knicks are gonna win something. No, gonna it's so detailed. Yeah, like, no, yeah. No, no, no. So the first thing that's gonna happen is he's gonna do this, and he's gonna do that, and on the third day he's gonna do that, and on the seventh day he's gonna do this. And I was like, oh my god. He has, tw- he has 26 bets. 26! Yeah. It's not one! Yeah, it's so many. And like, all or most of them come no, through. all 26 hit. Really? It's all 26. Wow. He gets all 26 bets right. Well, because I think we like calculated based on like the m- amount of money in the bags. So based on the amount she brought was like 165k. So he made out with like at least a million dollars. Yeah. Like pro- probably like at least eight hundred thousand or something like that. She gets it. She's bringing. She 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 gets the bags. She's coming back. She's duped the guys. She's duped the guys. She gets in the taxi, and then Howard is like, "Okay, well, you know, I won." He's so the all money. Excited. He's yeah. all excited. And he opens the door, and then I think. And then Arno is even like, "Oh my!" Because it's an, it's a celebratory moment where like there's clapping, there's cheering. Yeah. She's in the hotel room, like, "Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! We did it, baby!" And, and Howard's all like. Yeah, I did it. I did it. And I was like, oh my God, he fucking did it. And then one of the gooks just shoot him in the fucking face, yeah. Howard. So. Just like that. Like it just oh, fucking yeah. happens. Yeah. It's so brutal. And Arno like, fucking freaks out and like. I don't want to kill him. I don't yeah. want to kill him. And, then, and he was going to get his money too. But yeah. they're like, no, we're done with his shit. He probably isn't going to give us the money. And so again, like the whole thing of Arno, I don't think he ever wanted to like really hurt no, Howard. No. He never wanted this, and then he just didn't realize that if he hired outside help, they would see him as weak and go, "Well, fuck this. We need to get paid somehow because we don't get paid unless he gets the money." And then just ransack fucking Howard's jewelry store and, and they kill Arno. They kill Arno because yeah. he he is getting really emotional and then he tries to like fuck them up, but. I thought he. I saw that as I thought he was trying to go over to Adam Zandler because they wanted oh, him to okay. stay up against the wall. And then yeah, I think. I think no, that's. He, he was trying to leave. He went for the buzzer. Yeah, I think he went. For, he go, oh. Yeah, he goes to the buzzer. He tries to hit the button. Oh, okay. What a what a terrifying but great ending, where it's like everything like it makes perfect sense. Like this was always how it was going to go. Like you can't just cross people this many times and not have consequences. Yeah. But at the same time, he dies with a fucking fucking smile on his face because. He won. He did it. He won. Yeah. And that's what it was really about. It wasn't about the money. It was about that feeling that he got from yeah, gambling. Yeah, we get, we get the wonderful end as it begins, zooms in on his bullet hole, yeah. and it's like a galaxy inside. It's like, oh. Really good. Really great movie. And at least Julia got away with the money. Yeah. <laughs> I can feel like some comfort in that. That's good. You yeah. know, Julia was best girl in the end. Great ass. Anyway, Julia Fox, uh, be in more movies, please, because you're very talented. This is her feature film debut. Oh, really? Yep. Very nice. Well, so, um, yeah, that was Uncut Jumps. Damn good fucking movie. Yeah, again. It was like it was really good. I need to see it again. I probably will see it. Again. I probably will. Yeah.
Give my this and not Star Wars. Please. Yeah. I, every, I, I watched Star Wars and that was pain. Every, every time you're like, I should go see Rise of Skywalker, go see Uncut Gems instead. Like, not every time you decide to go see. Every time you think of seeing. Right? <laughs> just, go, just go see Uncut go Gems. Go see Uncut Gems. Buy a ticket. Like, this, like, I hope... Buy it on, on home release. Yeah. I hope this is I hope this is like the good version of Slumdog Millionaire that sweeps the Oscars <laughs> and it like deserves it. If Sandler doesn't get a yeah. nom a nom for this, come on. He should get a nom. Yeah. He should get a nom. I mean well, not he, that the Oscars he, he, matter. He but, not, they yeah. don't. They don't matter. They but don't they matter, matter to him. <laughs> they matter to Adam they Sandler. Matter to, no, no, Adam Sandler said if this it is with an Oscar, he will do the shittiest movie ever. <laughs> oh, I actually want to see that because then it would be him so like I didn't just see that on Twitter. That was like an advertised thing from Uncut Gems on Instagram. Oh, oh shit! They they're, advertise. They're that. like, please go see this, so Adam Sandler just makes good things now. Oh no! That's wow. so terrifying that he threatened. Yeah, I thought Jem's advertisement is actually threatened to me. He's like, no, listen, if you don't do this, I'm gonna make Jack and Jill five. Oh shit! And it's like, what happened to the other ones? Well, they'll come in time. I decided to make the worst chapter first. On Netflix first. Oh shit! But yeah, Uncut Gems is a really great film. Top three of the year. Top three of the year. Yeah, at least, yeah. Yeah, at least. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd say for me, it probably goes Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Uncut Gems, El Camino. Probably be my. I'd probably my say I'd, Uncut Gems is beautiful. I'd, I'd say so it. as well. It's a good fucking movie. I'd say so as well. Us reviewing positive stuff is always interesting because we're just like, yeah, it's just good. Yeah. Well, there's not really a whole lot to say other than everything that's like a setup gets paid off. The acting is great. Everything makes Sometimes sense. Sometimes the score feels a bit too overpowering, I'd say. I can agree with yeah, that. Yeah, there's points. Yeah, um, there's points. There's one plot that the guy gets brought up and kind of dropped where, like, he brings the son up into his apartment because he has to go take a piss. I was gonna, He goes yeah. to the neighbor, that he pisses, and on the way back, the kid's like, hey, who's the hawker you're living with? And don't yeah. say anything about that. And he kind of gives the kid some looks and then the car... Well, because the tension was that he was gonna see Julia up there, yeah. but then she wasn't there. But now the, but now the kid knows about the Julia... But then doesn't tell the mom. And well, I, mean, I felt like you were gonna have a scene where that. Was no, that was literally point. just uh, his last one of his last positive relationships breaking down. Yeah. Because the mom, the mom and the daughter already know that he's fucking other women. Yeah. The son though was like, oh, was that mom? Don't ask about that. So now he that relationship is corrupted too. Great, right, thanks. I hate it. But then there was the Jewish guys who wanted their payment and got the watch. That only really pays off in that it was Damani's watches. They don't really. I, I totally figured it'd be like a fucking play where everyone shows up at the end and everyone's there. It isn't quite that. That's all. And also, there's the one guy who works for Adam Sandler who just is like, I'm going to quit if this keeps up. And then you just, you see him in a shop at some point, and he's, I guess he's quit. I can't remember. The guy right. who walks in and him. And oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. One of, it's when he gets the fish. Yeah. It's also, by the way, one of the best lines ever. I'm going to fucking come. So good. <laughs> It's like, you know, in a different Adam Sandler movie, this would fill you with revulsion, but here, you know, you're coming along with them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no, there was some revulsion still. Oh, uh, there, well, there was, but it wasn't, like, the same. Was, no, 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 no. It was more like, yeah. Yeah, this movie was really fucking good. I'd say incredibly well-paced, great at keeping up the, the suspense and the, the atmosphere. Adam Sandler, best performance I've ever fucking seen him ever fucking do. Mm -hmm. Score was good, occasionally too overpowering. Just very distinctive style. Because it was like the handheld kind of shaky cam, but it was never, like, hard to follow. Yeah. It was very well shot. Mm -hmm. I agree. Well, that was Uncut Gems. Thank Great you so movie. much for listening to this podcast. Uh, I don't know what's going to come after this, so Something. please watch more of our videos. Subscribe, like, follow be, our Twitter. It will not be a grudge review. Oh, shit. Yeah, well, because Nathan convinced me for this upcoming Halloween, I got to do the grudge and the ring this, franchise. This upcoming. You know, it's and, far enough away for me to feel better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Until well, the pain starts. That's what it is. The pain. The rage. It says good sadness. To Oscars. I can cut that if you want. I might. We'll see. Ad Adam Sandler, except that he makes a movie so bad they change the Razzie to a Sandler. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Uh. <laughs> oh, God. Black Jew Palace.